Okay, today we're going to be talking about doing um, our cross sections. Um, so part of this is if you have to produce um, a plan. No, I can't, sorry. <laughs> it's out of my control. Um, so we're going to do um, a couple of cross sections. I can't remember how many I said. Was it two or three or something like that? Two? So yeah, we'll do probably one through the entire site and then an area of interest. So it might be whatever you're proud of. So if you've done a really great job through the bleachers, you might want to do a little section through that. Okay. Sorry? Someone say something? Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So the cross-section tool works pretty easily. Um, you don't have to have your drawing up at the moment. Um, you could just make a little mesh off to the side. doesn't really matter. I'm going to draw a little section through this area. Um, so, let's see, how does that work? All we have to do, is, you know, I'll do, a, I'll do a section through my entire site, north to south. Okay, so this would be like, um, let's say, a west. Um, I'm going to do a section. Now, the only difference between a section and elevation, for us, an elevation technically doesn't really make much sense. Um, with a building it does, because you're looking at the wall of a building, you know, and you'd see the doors and windows and all that sort of stuff. With landscape, it only really makes sense if you're doing, um, like looking at a site that was perhaps going up a hill and you're looking at it that way. Um, so you'll see everything. In Archicad, the only real difference is that you'll find that the defaults are a little bit different. So it'll have shading and you'll see where the shadows are being cast. So you could do an elevation if you had, for example, you know, maybe a pergola or something and some other features and you're looking at it from the side. So technically it would be an elevation, not a section. Um, but you'll find in most cases what you're doing is a section. You're cutting through the landscape and drawing whatever it is that you've cut through and you're drawing back. So for us, it's a little bit grey, the difference between a section and elevation. In architecture, it's very clear. One's cutting through the building, one's the side of the building. Okay? But we don't deal with a single object like that, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So um, my advice would be is that um, I'll show you both and how they look, and you just use whichever one that you want the look of. So I'm going to do a section, and I'm going to just kind of click straight up above my site here, and all the way down to the bottom here, right? I usually like to have a little bit of overhang. All right, and now the, this is just saying which side do you want to draw. Now, there's actually three ways of doing this. We're doing an infinite section, so it's going to cut through our site, and it's going to draw everything in one direction, Okay. So I'm going to click on this side. So it's going to cut through my site through here and draw everything in that direction. Um, you'll notice that this, at the moment, doesn't make much sense. It says drawing ID, layout ID. Later on, not in this assignment, but the next assignment, I'm going to show you how all the layouts work. And what will happen is that will actually get the drawing ID and the layout ID, or the, the page number typically, that that drawing is found on. So it'll automatically label that as soon as it's been placed on a piece of paper. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to manually rename that. Um, I'll do that in a second because I want to show you first. Now, on the navigator down here, you'll see it says sections. And we can go A4 section. Excellent. Double click on it. And it draws our section. Look at that. Now... Actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mesh as well, because there's a couple of things in there that doesn't make a lot of sense for the, the, a normal person. Um, one is all the ridge lines. Okay, for us, it's great. We can really see what the terrain's doing. But if you go and put down a drawing, it really, it's like, what are you building here? Some kind of weird superstructure? That's, that's, I don't understand. So we probably want to switch that off. There's also a couple other lines in here. This is from my roads. It's going to cut through, you know, so here it looks quite good. But I've got a few extra lines in here that, again, don't make any sense, and I shouldn't put them there. Okay, I've put down the drawing, it's like, what the hell is this? It's like a bore, what is that? Okay, we've got some trees in here as well, which are actually looking all right, I suppose. You can see I've actually cut through a few leaves, that's why it's got the green pen. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Sometimes if you cut through a tree, you end up making it look very odd, especially if it's just a thin section. Okay, so that's a basic section. Let's look at the other types of sections first. So this time I'm going to do um, a thin section. So that's this um, last option here. And I go straight through my bleachers. 
Now, Rem, if you want to be 90 degrees, very important if you're trying to get um, you know, accurate drawings. So I want to be 90 degrees to my bleachers. If I hover over here, see the little orange dot, click on that, it'll give me a nice guideline. Beautiful. Might go and take it all out to here. Again, which side do you want to be on? I want to be on that side. I'm going to draw looking in that direction. Sections, elevation says A5. Cool. And there it is. Now, another thing here, I'm kind of, my section goes all the way down to sea level, which is a little bit weird. Um, I only really want this bit up here. I don't, I don't need all this down here. Also, notice how big my text is. Anybody know why my text is so big? No? Yes, you're getting very, very close. Why did I have to zoom in? Small. Yes, that's right. My scale is completely wrong. So if I set this to 100%, that's about how big it would be on my page. Okay, not very cool. So maybe about 1 to 200 maybe. Probably even go more than that, 1 to 100 even. Okay, remember this text is set to be a millimetre size. So I think it's about 3 or 4 millimetres high. Okay, when it gets printed out. So if that text is really huge, you've got to remember that's 3 or 4 millimetres high. That means you'd, my drawing before was probably about 5 or 6 millimetres high. Yeah, well, maybe a bit more than that. You can also see my fill now makes a lot more sense. Before I had this huge, big fill. The fill is actually the same size. Everything else just got bigger. All right. So I want to get rid of that ground floor as well, really, don't I? So we're going to have to address that. Cool. This is looking all nice, isn't it? You can see now my mistake. I've gone and buried uh, my steps. Whoopsies. You can also see my landscape's looking a bit linear. That's all right. Um, note as well, I've got two meshes here. I've got that road mesh on. Now, the easy option here is I could just go, oh, well, let's switch the road mesh off. Uh, road mesh. Wait, hide that. Okay. Oops. There's one on the road mesh. Mesh. Oopsies, I haven't changed the mesh that it's on. That mesh. Nice, it is. Mesh. Oh, it's on the road slab. It's on the wrong one. It should be on road mesh. There we go. Cool. So I've got rid of that double line now. That's nice. I'd still need to clean this up a little bit. Okay. We'll come back to that as well. Um, let's just have a look at this other option that we've got here. So remember, that was a thin section. Where are we? F2. Okay, so it just cuts through. Whatever I slice through, it draws only what it cuts through. It doesn't draw anything else. So I'm not seeing the hill going off in the distance here. And the reason I would want to do that is, for example, if I was drawing, um, maybe I wanted to put in some detail for how this... Um, this road goes, you know, and it's like, that's kind of cool. I want to cut through here and I want to be able to see, perhaps even, actually, let's just think about this for a second. Um, let's say I'm cutting through here, right? I want to see um, right through my park, but I don't want to see the bleachers. I just want to see um, a section through my field. Okay, I'm going to be doing a lot of alterations to my field. So, um, go back to my sections. This time I'm going to do a limited distance. So I'm going to cut through my field. Okay, maybe I'll go all the way up to here. And this time, the little eyeball, I want to draw it just to the other side so I'm not quite hitting the, the bleachers. Cool. Here's my other section. Okay, so you can see I've drawn through. I can't see the bleachers though. If that was drawing on forever, I would see not only the bleachers, but I'd see the hill going up and all the buildings and behind it and all that sort of carry on. Okay, I'm still seeing some um, stuff further back, so you can see how the hill's going up. We're still seeing these ridge lines. Okay. Let's deal with the ridge lines. That's easy. If I just select my mesh and go back to the mesh tool, we have a little hunt through here. We'll actually find one that says ridge line selection, show all ridges. If we click on that, you can see it says show user defined ridges which in this case should just be my contours and any ridge lines that I've drawn. Why oh, isn't it? I 
get rid of that. Okay, well that's also an interesting thing. Sometimes you go and change some settings and it doesn't update. It's very rare that this happens. It used to happen all the time. Usually what you have to do is go to, um, where are we? View, refresh, refresh rebuild. Um, and it usually will fix it. No, not today. Okay, design. I'm oh, sorry. Edit, uh, view, refresh. We'll go rebuild from model. Damn it. They're not meant to be there. See, it's disappeared from here. Um, yeah, I've got another idea. Why is it still in there, though? Let's have a look at those options. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So user, it should only be shown. Um, okay, I'm also going to change all ridges to smooth. This is kind of unrelated. Um, however, you probably want to leave this until it comes to rendering. You go, okay. Oh, there you go, that's done it. So smoothing it has done it. Also, you'll notice, it looks like we've still got, oh, it's probably a ridge line that I've put in at some stage, perhaps. I don't know. But it's definitely simplified it a lot. If I go to the 3D view, also check that out. It's all nice and curvy and smooth. Look pretty cool. The only reason I say you want to kind of save that till later, it's great for your renderings and everything, but it's actually for you, you'll find it quite difficult to tell what the landform's doing. When you can see the sharp ridges, you can really tell where you've got detail and where you haven't. So it's a lot easier to, to work with with the ridges left on as being all ridges sharp. You know, now I can really see the, what's happening on the ground. So for me, that's fantastic. It doesn't look all that great for the client, though. The client wants to see nice, curvy, soft hills. Okay. Um, so is there anything else in there? Oh, I, I might as well talk about it. There's also this option here that says user-defined sharp. Not really appropriate for us in this case, but you can see what it's doing is that our contours are sharp and that everything else is nice and smooth. So if you're trying to do something like, I don't know, maybe a, um, a swimming pool or something, you might want you know, the bottom of the pool to be flat and it's got a sharp edge, but then the sides are all nicely smooth, you know, and then it has another sharp edge. So, um, you know, or maybe you're trying to make like a, um, a round circular top and it goes down to a square base. See what the sides are all nicely smooth and going from the circle to the square? but you don't want the edges being rounded off. So that's where um, that option is actually quite convenient. All right. Maybe we want to sculpt our land like this. I'm going to leave it on all ridges sharp for now, though. Okay. So for some reason, yeah, that, I'm sure that used to switch off the ridge lines when you switched off the ridge lines, but anyway. What else can we do in here? Um, okay, remember I was saying, I think it was in this section here, I want to limit this range. Okay, so if I go to the section, see this it says here A5 section AA, if I go settings, I can see here we've actually got a whole bunch of options. Now, first thing I'm going to show you, and you can do this before you drew the section as well, I think this is the 15 metre contour, so maybe I want to go down to I know, let's say maybe about 12 metres, so I can go limited range, draw from 12 metres to, well, it doesn't really matter, oh, is it doing that little trick, to lift the top before the bottom, so I don't know, let's say 50, it doesn't really matter how high I go, but I need the bottom to be 12, okay, sweet, we've chopped off the bottom, so now you can see I've got yeah, a little bit more room to play with. Now you can also see, see we've got this kind of edge in here. What I quite often do is I'll just use the mesh there as a guideline. So it's kind of like this is all great but I want a nice smooth mesh and I've made a few mistakes here. Really I should change the mesh to be correct but I'm a lazy draftsman and I'm going to go and grab my fill tool and set it up so that it looks like earth. Cool. Yeah, That's all good. Um, 
Actually, what I might do is I'm going to use the spline. Actually, I'll, I'll draw this this fill in here anyway because I want it to go kind of like this, right? And it's going to be a little bit crew here. So there's my new fill, right? But I'm going to use a spline down here because splines are nice and curvy and nice, and it's going to go through my points, kind of like this, right? And I'm going to be I'm going to cheat a little bit and uh, pull this in here. I am cheating, so really I should change my mesh. The, the reason I would want to change my mesh, if I go and do other sections, I'm going to have to do this for every single one. I'm going to have to really move my contours, otherwise I'm kind of telling lies when I go and show the contour map. It wouldn't actually be accurate. So I really should be going back, changing those contours, recreating the mesh. But All I wanted was a section, so that's all I'm going to get. All right, so now I can switch off Terrain Original. So if I go Command L, Terrain Original, I'll hide that. Excellent. And I'm going to select this, click on the edge. I want to minus a shape like what we've been doing with the slabs. And I'm going to minus out, hmm, actually, how's that going to work? Oh, this shape, I suppose. There we go. Cool. Um, remember, it's following the magic wand settings. So I might just go undo and just have a look at my magic wand settings because at the moment I've got the segments along an arc and linear segments. I want best match and deviation to be less than 0.1 of a meter. Cool. Do it again. Minus, minus my shape, this shape. Excellent. Cool. So now I've got a nice, I could either switch that layer off or delete it. Now I've got a nice curvy... Um, shape, this fill here. This is also looking pretty cool. I could add a bit of extra detail, maybe there was some you know, other shapes going underneath it, so I can grab my fill tool, maybe there's a bit of hardcore um, underneath it, a bit of gravel or something like that. And where are we? Cut stone, somewhere in here there's, oh, okay, that's not cool. Oh, we're back again. Rubble. Hmm. Not really what I wanted. Lightweight concrete. Here, let's say it. Let's say there's lightweight concrete under here. I can. Oh, hang on, I want a square really, don't I? Remember, if you're trying to guide, there's a little orange dot. Excellent. This area in here, see, it's actually all a bunch of little shapes, which is kind of annoying, but again, really, I should just go and change the fill of this, which, not you. That's my road slab. That should be on its own layer as well, but anyway. It'll probably come back to haunt me later on. Cut surfaces. So here's the cut pen. Here's the... Um, where's it? Oh, here, background fill. Here we go. So I want this to be... Um, hmm, let's see. Lightweight concrete as well, but let's say it's got a different colour for some reason. Oh, it is a different colour anyway. Okay. Cool. Oh. Probably end up going down to about 1 to 50 now. But that, that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so you can go through and do all your own sections and elevations and then clean it all up. So I'm kind of using, in this case, I'm using the section really as a guide. Um, and you can just go through and add a little bit of extra detail wherever you like. So maybe there's going to be like wooden seats put on here. You could just draw them in the section. Um, and the 3D, it's not going to make any difference in plan. It's not going to make any difference. But you know, maybe in here I just go and put in um, a little little shape. Let's say it's a fill that's made out of aluminium. And it looks something like... Obviously, you'd put a little bit more effort into it than what I'm doing. Yeah, maybe that corner's rounded off. It's a 0.2 radius. Yeah. So you can put in all sorts of extra, extra detail um, just in the section. As long as you're telling the same story, what's the difference, really, eh? Um, I can also put text in there. Text is great because it says lots of information without me having to draw it. You know, seat. Oh, 
Cedar, cedar. Yeah, that's just a little text tool down here. So it's just all click, click, click. A little text box. And there's things like, yeah, right align and left align. Now, just remember, if the text is looking too small, probably the scale's a bit wrong. Okay, that's two and a half millimeters high, so it should be fine as far as text is. That means that this drawing is pretty big, so it's like, okay, maybe I'll go one to a hundred then. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so I know actually that's probably going to look all right on a piece of paper. I could do a step and repeat on this, remember that trick? So if I go Command U, I think it is. Yep. Number of copies. Oh, actually, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, let's say. So we command U, nine copies, um, and then distribute them from this corner to this corner. There we go. That's some weird design, by the way. <laughs> Maybe I don't want every second one. No, something like that. Cool. So you can do all sorts of stuff in there. All right. Now, another thing I said, if I just go to one of these other sections, see this ground floor? It took me years to figure this out. I used to just stick big white blocks over it because I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. You know, later on when we do the layouts, you can crop the sides off the drawing. So just crop the sides off the drawing. In the story settings, so if you click on one of your stories and go settings, there's this little tick box over here, which if you see that, it means nothing really, does it? If you uncheck that and go OK, it disappears. It just purely means that it will draw a line in your section. So if you had multiple floors, you'd have multiple lines for each floor. Yeah. Try finding that in the menu. <laughs> it's the last place you'd think of looking. Ah, now here's another little interesting thing. Notice my terrain has gone and disappeared out of here. We've got a slight problem. And that I've now that I've got multiple drawings, every time I go and switch things in, on and off, it's kind of affecting my other drawings, which is a pain in the bum. That means that for this drawing, I have to switch on certain meshes and layers and that sort of carry on, and other ones I don't. Now, I've got a couple of options here. I could create some layer combinations. So let's do that. So for this one here, this, this is looking cool. So the layers that I've got switched on and off are brilliant for my... Um, for my A5 section, okay, or my um, seating section, let's call it. So I'm going to create a new layer combination called seat section. And that means that if I want to get this layer combination back up, all I have to do is open up my layers and click, click on seat section and I've got it. So now I can go to this section over here and go Command L and um, select all show. Okay, so I've got all my layers back on again. Hit OK. Okay, that was kind of cool, but there's still a few things that are a bit odd. Um, yeah, so that one's, that one's fine. Maybe I'm going to make a few changes to that. Maybe I have the trees switched off in this one. Okay, they're a little bit deceiving because you kind of expect to see trees sitting on this contour. Well, that's it's not bad, but anyway. So I can go through, I can, change, I can turn layers on and off in this, and then go and save another layer combination. Cool? But the problem with that is every time I go, now I have to go over here, it switches on a whole bunch of layers I didn't want to see. I can see all my rows, and it's like, oh, that's right, now I've got to go through here, go to layers, go seat section. Okay, and everything's back to normal again. Isn't there a better way? Well, we can kind of improve on that. On the navigator, there's this thing over here which we use to save views. So what the saved view is, is basically what I'm seeing on my screen, it's going to save everything. It's going to save the scale that it's at. Um, it's going to save the layers that are switched on and off and the pen sets that I'm using, all sorts of other little bits and pieces. So that's very convenient. So all I have to do, see down here is like a little new, it looks like a house with an asterisk next to it. Save current view. Cool. Um, I can give it a name. I can change all sorts of stuff. What's neat with this as well is later on, okay, not for this assignment, but later on, if you give it a name in here, when you go and throw it 
onto the page, it will put that in the title block. So all that information just flows on. So I can just leave it as is in this case, I will. Um, but you can see here it's got the layer combination. Notice, see, because I had a layer combination already created, it's automatically put that in there, which is brilliant. Because if I had lots of different sections through my seats, and I decided, actually, I do want the original fill switched on, I can just update the seat section layer combination, and all of my drawings will all get updated in one fell swoop. If I didn't do that, if I just switched ones on and off, you'll, that will say, say something like um, custom, I think it says. So it will save which layers were on and off, but I haven't got any way of actually updating that. So saving a layer combination is still a very smart idea. You'll see in here as well as the scale, what it's going to be drawing is the entire model. That's if, um, yeah, oh, we won't go there. Um, the pen set, so there's lots of different pen sets, um, and we'll talk about that later as well. Um, model, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so, so this is actually quite handy. So, oh, I suppose it would be a little bit of an issue for you guys, because you probably notice at the moment when you go and put down like um, windows, it's got like all these markers attached to it with lots of information. If you don't want to see that, you can just change that to building plans, no markers and all the doors and windows would disappear. We'll have a look at that later as well, because I'm going to talk about doors and windows. Um, renovation filter, we're not doing that. Dimensions. So this is actually where you can change it. So you can actually have a drawing in feet and inches. So you can actually go into the save view settings and have different dimension sets. Oh, we're doing dimensions for this. That's, I think I said that, eh? You have to dimension some things. Is that right? And the no. no, I didn't. I so. no, okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, we'll do dimensions the next. But yeah, but we'll be able to have different sets of dimensions or you know different units for dimensions, which can be quite handy. Anything else? Zooming, fit in window. Um, actually, I'll come back to that fit in window because save views are also just great just for getting around your drawing. So I go create. So now I've got a saved view. See it's down here? You can create folders and arrange these. The saved view, you can delete a saved view, you won't delete anything vital. Okay? It's just a bunch of settings. And here though, okay, with the little houses, if you delete a section from here, you delete it off your drawing. It's gone forever. You're never getting that section back again. So this, if, you, if you'd like to think of it, this is where the the information lives, okay, all of your drawings, that's, that's where they are. If you delete a story or a section or an elevation from there, it's gone forever. The views are just views of that data. Okay, so if you can go through, you can delete all of these ones if you don't like them. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, it's like, no, these all suck. I don't want any of them. Trash it. Cool. Not a big deal. Okay, you'll see the same thing with the layouts. You can delete all the layouts. The layouts are just the views dropped onto pages. So it's kind of this flow of data. And this is what we're going to be doing more with the next assignment. But yeah, you've got your model. Then you've got saved views of that model. Then you're putting those saved views on sheets of paper. And then you're exporting that as PDFs or printing it or whatever. And that's what those four, four buttons are. Okay, so we're just getting into the first two now. So there I've saved a view of that. If I flick over to um, here, I can switch layers on and off. Now, this is also very handy for your studio if you're doing that. You guys in studio are working in a small site, which means that every time you hit fit to view, you've got to zoom into a certain area and where you go. So you're working over here, right? You've got certain layers switched on and off. You can just go new and go, I'm going to give this a name this time. This is a new saved view. I'm going to call it custom. And I'll call it um, studio site. Cool. Oops. Or oh, caps lock was on. Not a big deal. Um, what scale? What scale are you guys? Mostly 2,500 or something, eh? So I can change that to 2,500. Oh, there isn't one there. Not a big deal. Custom 2,500. Cool. What layer combination? 
Um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to say all. Although there's a little warning with all. Remember, all is a combination of, of layers. It doesn't actually mean all unless you go and switch of all of them on and update the all combination. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Sir. So I'll, I'll do that, though. Because you'll probably find as soon as I go, OK, everything disappears because I've got everything on custom layers. Now, see this? OK, we've already gone through a few of these other things. But down the bottom here, see it says um, zooming fits in window. If you click on that, it says current zoom. So this is really handy. So you can have um, little courtyard and all this sort of carry on, and it's going to go to that part of your drawing. It's going to zoom in to wherever you were when you saved this and switch all the layers on and off so we can see the whole lot. So if I go current zoom, cool, and go create, remember I said a whole bunch of things would switch off? Actually, what's that one? Oh, that's on the wrong layer anyway. That should be on import sidereal. Cool. So if I go to my layers, you'll actually see, see all of the layers that I've created are switched off? So I'm going to select all, show, so now everything's on, and I'm going to all and say update. So now update does have all of the layers. I wish it just did that by default. It would be really nice, but it doesn't. Um, the reason they do that, and it is quite smart, because if you've got a, layer, a drawing and it's all working perfectly, and you go and create a new layer and you start drawing on it, the last thing you want is it to add that layer to the current layer combination, have it all switched on, and all your drawings change. You know, so any new layer um, that you create doesn't automatically get added to any layer combination, including the all. So you just have to remember, if we go and create a new layer for um, our seat section, and I go and add some extra stuff, I have to update that layer combination to include that new layer. Does that make sense? Okay, so a lot of what I'm talking about at the moment is, is to do with workflow. So the more you kind of, you know, remember originally I was saying you're going to create something, think about what layer it's going on. So that's really important because then whatever layer it ends up on ends up in part of a combination, which ends up part of a saved view, which ends up on a drawing, which ends up getting printed out. So it all starts with it being on the correct layer to begin with. So I want to see you guys using layers. I know it's so easy just to be sort of a bit lazy and just start dropping trees and cars and people and all that sort of stuff, and then find that everything is all on layer, was it um, objects, I think, it, objects furniture, I think it is by default. You know, and then it's like, okay, right, turn off your trees. Ah, I can't. And then you're going around selecting individual trees, and it's painful. And you just wish, why the hell didn't I just go trees layer and start drawing trees? So, all right. So that's all cool. Now, uh, so we've updated that. So I'll show you. So for example, been playing around. I was went to my section A A. I flipped back to here. Uh, I need to get back to my studio site. Just double click. Boom. I'm in my studio site with all the layers switched on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so you can just save these views. I need to get back to my section. Double click, bang. There's my section with all the section layers all switched on and other things switched off and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I need to get back to studio site, boom. Anything I save, so let's see, I go to section A5 here. No, sorry, A4. This is good. Um, fit to view. Cool. Let's um, that's, that was the thing. So I'm going to save a view of that. I just go into here, save a view. Yep, section AA. That's cool. Layer combination is all. Yes, that's what I wanted. Scale is one. Actually, I'm going to change that to one to two and a half thousand. Cool. Loving it. Create. Cool. So there's section AA. So there's that section. And there's that section. There's my studio site. Get it. And it gets even cooler. If we go to 3D, right? And you've probably done this and wandering around trying to check out stuff. Um, remember, I had a cool view over here of the. Um, 
of my lake, looking through the trees. I'll go page down and drop an elevation there a little bit. Cool, like that. Excellent. Save a view. And that's going to save that view. So now I can just double click and I'll go exactly to that part of the site. Um, it's going to have a custom name called Lake View. Or actually, maybe Car Park Lake View because there's that car park there, isn't there now? Car Park Lake View. Scale. I don't know why it says scale because it's not to scale, it's a perspective. There's nothing in there to scale, so it should be greyed out technically. Hit create. Cool. So there's my section. There's the studio site. There's the lake car park. So even if I go and wander off somewhere, I just double click. And again, it's going to switch on all the layers and everything. You know, or the layers on or off or whatever I like. Sorry? Oh, this one, yes. Okay, good, good question. Okay, sometimes, now we kind of modified a drawing before and I kind of just created a new fill. But you can imagine if there was lots and lots of fills and they're really complex like this one is, um, what I want to do is actually just select these lines and start playing around with them. Now, this does come with a little bit of a warning as well. But what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to go to the settings for this section. What's this? Section A4. Okay, here it is. Go settings. Now, so we looked at the vertical range. We can actually change this at any point in time to um, be a limited depth or a thin section. So if this, this was an infinite section, I was like, no, it was meant to be a thin section. I can just change that to um, zero depth here as well. Notice here it says status. It says auto rebuild model. That's great. That means that I make changes to my site, I open my section, everything's all updated. Sometimes it can be a pain in the bum. There might be a million different trees in there and all that sort of carry on. And every time you go and open the section, it redraws the entire thing and it takes forever. Especially there's um, options um, to do shadow casting and things like that. And so then it tries to do all the shadows and create, and it's a nightmare. If you change it to manual update, that means it won't update unless you say update. Um, by doing that rebuild again. So that's quite cool. However, there's also this option to change it into a drawing. Now, when I do this, it's going to disconnect it from my model. Um, I can't remember to what degree. I've got a funny feeling that anything I edit will be disconnected. Anything I don't edit will stay connected. I could be wrong on that. But there is a level of disconnection. So you kind of want to do this once your terrain is bang on because otherwise the changes won't come through. So I change it to drawing and now, turn, 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 all of my um, meshes are now fills. All of these lines are lines. So here you can see that this mesh actually has a few lines and stuff in it. Okay, so I don't want that, I can delete it. I can delete that line. Um, now this is actually, that one's cool. Actually I'm going to leave it like this because this let's say that's my top soil, right? And here's my road. I can actually grab this now and bring it all the way up. Cool. Actually that was, oh yeah, I want to do it to this one as well. Cool, I'm going to delete this line, delete that line. You'll actually find that even the fill, is it? Oh no, sorry, the fill is a fill, so I can, that's still got the same things. Oopsies. Kind of need a bit more of an edge on this. So, what can we do about that? Well, this is where I'm going to go through. I can just grab lines now and. Actually, no. I'm going to change the fill of this to have a solid outline, would be probably more, make more sense. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, let's see. It's for some reason. Got a line black. Yeah, cool. Okay. There we go. So now I've got a line that goes around. So this is what I was saying before, that we can actually go through now. See, so this is um, our solid element operation, which the big disadvantage of it is that in section it just doesn't look realistic. But I can go through now and draw curbs and road surfaces and things like that. And I know that it all lines up perfectly with my model because it 
was created from the model. And I can just go through and add some extra fills and things like that. Um, square. Yeah, so maybe it looks something like that. And then there's yeah, a little curbing up here. Oops. Actually, I'll just use the line, the polyline tool. So maybe the curve goes along and then it comes down, yeah, and then there's a bit of gutter. Cool. I can grab the edge corner of that and give it a maybe not quite so extreme. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, draw on the road surface, et cetera, et cetera. So you can actually go through. Um, remember as well, it's, sometimes I find it easy to draw with things like the polyline tool, and then you decide later, actually I wanted that to be a fill. Not a big deal, you just grab the fill. Um, I want this to be lightweight concrete and just magic wand that shape. Cool. It's probably got to do with my scale that I can't see that, because remember this is meant to be out here somewhere. So I'm probably drawing detail that I can't actually see. <laughs> Note as well, you can see like all the trees and everything. You can actually delete leaves if you don't like them individually. That would be kind of a nightmare actually. But it's just a separate drawing. I could go through and delete all my ridge lines now. Again, I probably should have done that before I started. I can go like this though. So you can manipulate anything you like. Um, this terrain's a bit blocky. You could you know, start curving off the edges of it. No, this is meant to have a, um, a four meter radius. You know, now it's all nice and soft going from one corner to the next. So anything that you create in that section, you can go through and just edit the hell out of it until it looks like what you want it to look like. I haven't wrecked my original drone, but if I make changes to my original mesh, it's not going to change this because they're now very disconnected. It's not a mesh. It's just a bunch of fills and lines. So there is a little bit of a break in my workflow. If the client now says, raise that field by half a metre, which they will do, ah, bugger. But, you know, it depends on how much work you've done. If you've just done a few little things, you could copy and paste, um, you know, some of them through to a new section and paste my, you know, all your road details that's in the same place anyway. Not a big deal. Um, you'll see, if you change this back to auto-rebuild model, in fact, so I just want to get a nice view so I can kind of see a few of the changes I've made. So let's say I rounded off this corner, right? With a two meter radius, it looks like that. If I go and change this section back to an auto rebuild model and go OK, OK, so you can see some things stayed, some things disappeared. That thing stayed because it was completely custom, whereas the shape of my mesh changed. I've ended up with this hole back again and all that sort of carry on. Okay, so not terrible, but it does mean I've got a little bit of extra work just to reshape that mesh again. All those ridge lines would have reappeared again, etc., etc. So um, I, I can't think of a better way of being able to do it anyway. You can't really have one without the other. So you want to change the hell out of it as, as if it was a fill. Well, you are going to break that connection. So obviously, you can see here, is to try and get it as close as you can to begin with, so you're not doing lots of editing, but if you have to, you can. Sometimes it's easier just to modify a little section a little bit than it is to 3D model everything accurately down to the minute little detail. You know. And it just comes with experience that you'll figure out which is better. Sometimes, you know, it's the same thing with doing the renderings. You know, you can sit there and 3D render everything like little people and cars and stuff like that. You might find it's easier to just go out into the site, take a photo, and then drop your pergola straight into it using Photoshop. Then you're not doing any terrain modeling. Depends on what the client wants. If they just want to see a photo of their, you know, little folly in the middle of a field, well, then it probably is easier to Photoshop it and put it in. If they want everything landscaped and cross-sections and elevations and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then, yeah, you might as well go through and 3D model as much as you can because it's going to reduce the amount of Photoshop you have to do. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah, always very, well, it's already saved as a view anyway. Um, but yeah, at some point you should save it as a view, it just makes it a lot easier to manage all the layers that are switched on and the scale it's at. And No, well, it would save your entire Archicad document. That's not, yeah. So. How do you save all the little bits that you've just done if you're on the same view before? It does, it's all saved all in the same go. Yeah. The saved views are going to remember what scale it was at, what layers were switched on, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And so it's also a very fast way of changing things as well. So if you had to change all of your sections to 1 to 100, you can just go to each. Um, each saved view and go change that to 1 to 100. You kind of need to pop in there and just make sure everything fits in still. Sometimes you'll find your text is now over the top of something. But yeah, or you can change the layer combination and it will change the layer combination for all of your saved views. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, when you save, it saves everything. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to do an elevation as well, just so you can see what happens. So I'm going to do an elevation of my bleachers. There's the elevation tool. So this is the one that you actually see by default. Oh, and that's right. I've still got to, I've still got to name these as well. So I'm going to draw a section through here. Again, remember, I want to be um, perpend or parallel to the bleachers, so if I use that little guide, it will f give me a nice little parallel line using that orange dot. Now, I'm not exactly sure where these things come out, but oh well. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to draw it back into, the, into here as well. Make sure you've got that parallel line. There it is. See, it's got a little parallel symbol on it. Okay, and I want to draw in this direction. Okay, an elevation is just cutting through, it's looking at um, either everything, you don't, there's no such thing as a, as a thin elevation because it's looking at a surface, so it's not just what it cuts through. So you'll notice that that option's disappeared. So we have two options, either a limited view, i.e. we only draw back to a certain depth, or an infinite one, it draws everything in one direction. All right, in fact, because that's what I've done is a, a, a limited one, right? And here it is. See that little handle there? That's how far I'm drawing back. So if I didn't want it going back that far, I can actually just move that. So if there's a building here, I might not want to include it, which there is a building there actually. So now you see elevations, and here's the elevation. Oh, and you can see it's shaded as well. Again, for us, you can see it doesn't look much different to a section. Because we haven't got any overhangs or covered areas or things like that, we're not seeing any shadows falling in this case, which is quite often the case. If I had trees in there, then I would see the, the shadows of the trees falling. But big warning is that if you've got lots of trees, and it's lots of complicated shadows, it takes a long time sometimes to draw these. So you either switch off the trees um, or you don't, don't do elevations with, um, with shadow casting. Um, I'm just going to drop a giant, massive, floating slab above my scene so you can see the shadow falling on it. So I go slab, um, the top will be um, 25 metres, and the bottom's going to be 24 metres. I'm going to draw a giant, massive, floating slab. Okay, and you can see the shadow for my giant, massive, floating slab falling onto my landscape. So you can see in certain cases this will be awesome, okay? If there was a lot of playing around with shadows and um, pergolas and you want to see how the shadows from that were falling onto the wall in the background and blah, 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 it would be fantastic. But you can kind of also see that, yeah, an elevation in landscape doesn't make a lot of sense. If I was looking downhill, it would make no sense whatsoever because everything would disappear. If I did it at the top of the hill looking in this direction, all I'd see was the section. I wouldn't see anything else because it's all buried, I suppose you could think of it as. All right. I can also delete things from in here as well. Um, oh, you've, you'll find you've got limited editing ability in there as well. So 
Yeah, you can do things like change the thickness of slabs. Should be able to still be able to move this or something. You know, lift it up and move it left and right. Which can be quite handy if you're trying to, you know, put some um, rails on, a, on some stairs. You know, you can't be bothered working out what height they're meant to be. You can drop into the section elevation and then lift them up. Some of these tools will have a lot of editing ability in there as well. Okay. We'll have a little break soon, but first I just want to show you a couple of little handy tips. One is, remember that we had that section, which one was it? With the trees. Now, trees are nice in that yeah, you get scale and everything, but a lot of them, like these ones, look great in 3D, but they look, and they look great in plan, but they look pretty ugly in section, because yeah, we're seeing these kind of weird square leaves. My little tip of the day is, if you go into the object palette, you'll find in here somewhere, 2D elements, plant symbols, and you'll see there's like um, nice line drawn um, plants. Some of these have like different settings like winter and summer. Some of them don't. Blah, 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 blah. No, nope, I'm not finding any of them now. Hmm. Oh, here we go. See, it says view type, it says summer. We've also got winter view. Yeah. In fact, that's actually a pretty good close match to this tree. So I can go. Oh, there's also contour, I think, as well, some of these. Is that something? Yeah, contour, where it's just the outline of the tree. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, what you do is you change it so um, with all of the objects, actually, you've got the option just to place it you know, 90 degrees on the, on the ground, on an angle, or you can stretch the size of it, or stretch the size at an angle. So if you do that, then you can just go clip and drag a little box around this tree. Oops. <laughs> Obviously, you have to start from the bottom left. Cool, and then you get a nice symbol for our trees. Now, if I've been smart, my trees are on the trees layer, which they are, and my new symbol is also on the trees layer, which is not smart. I'm going to put that on a new layer called 2D trees. Now, also, what I should do, well, not that I've got any, but if I had any layer combinations, like the seat selection, and I wanted the 2D trees on, this is where I can go and update seat selection to include it. I suppose I could also update all, oh, really, can't I? Cool. So now I can go and switch off trees. Oops. Ah, I forgot to actually put my tree onto that tree layer. See how quickly that one comes up, and then you've got to wait for the other ones? Is that them? No. Oh, that's them there. Come on. See why you want to change it first? Okay, cool. Now I can go hide the trees layer and be left with just one beautiful 2D tree. Okay? So that's really, it's really fast. It doesn't take ages to draw. Um, they're a little bit more symbolic than your normal ones. Yeah, you can change it to contour, so then you just end up with a nice, you know, contour-shaped trees. And if I change that to mesh smooth, then I'd lose all those ridge lines. I can multiply those out if I had to as well. But what you do is, if you've got both of those on, so we're going to turn trees back on again, right? I want some more of these, so I'm just going to hide dropper them. There is the bottom left. If you don't like where it's um, clicking, go to the settings. You usually see it's got here, the little X's. So if I do that, that means when I click, it'll be the, the middle of where the trunk is, which makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm just 
just go through and then just drop a bunch of these trees on. They're all on the 2D trees layer, so that's nice. I can turn off trees. So I'll go OK. Yeah, and I've got symbols. You'll find that there's lots of other symbols in there as well. So you can just like, you know, jazz up your um, sections and elevations with all sorts of 2D stuff. There's probably people in there somewhere, I think. So where are we? 2D, sorry. Yeah, vehicle symbols. So some of these are quite intelligent. So if it's like a bicycle, you can see it's got view top, side, and rear. So I want the side view, you know. And you go, okay, cool. And I want to park a bicycle over here in my bicycle rack. Cool. So you get, if that was a 3D bicycle, it might not look that great in section or elevation. Even worse, I might cut through my bicycle, which looks terrible. Or I've got like, you know, 20 bicycles in my rack that looks fantastic in 3D, but in section it's just going to look like a complete mess. All right. Um, I'll let you play around with that a little bit, and then we'll come back and do curved roofs, a little bit with the walls and windows, and some 3D cutaways as well. I'll show you that. Let's pause it. All right. Okay. Um, so there's one thing I forgot to uh, mention. Remember, I was going to show you how to change these. For some reason, mine have changed to hashes. I don't know why. But in this case, because we're not laying it out in the correct manner, um, these sections are meaningless to us. They look very ugly. So what I'm going to do, if I select one of those sections, go into its settings, see here it says the name, it says source marker. Oh no, sorry, where is it? Um... Oh, sorry, now I've lost where it is. Blah, 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 blah. So, marker. Oh, this is where you can also change um, what it looks like. So you don't have to have a marker. You could say no marker. But there's also a whole bunch of settings, of course, including first row text. It says referred drawing. If I change that to custom, I can change that to custom as well. I can then go in there and say... Um, you know, north, oh no, sorry, um, west section or something like that, section A, whatever you want to call it. Obviously that one's not great because it's a bit big. So I'd probably call it like, you know, section A. See, as well, I've got the second row Texas ones, if I don't want them, I can just uh, switch that off. Right. Where is it? Oh, I think it's just that marker. So I'm sure somewhere it's got blah, 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 custom section A, uniform, marker style. Uh, the marker style, unfortunately, it doesn't have a graphic representation of it, but just click on them, you'll see that they look different. Cool. So we don't need the two symbols. I think number five is actually just one. So you can just go through and you can change it. And so now I go OK and it says A. Cool. Or AA. It's usually a bit more normal. Okay, but remember, in the future we're going to lay all these out and it's great that it actually has the, the name of it and what drawing it, it appears on and, the, um, and all that sort of carry on. So that's a really nice way of doing it. But for this, we're going to be printing what I call the wrong way. We're just going to be printing straight off the screen. All right. I'm going to show you something a little bit more fun. Um, it's not required for, the, um, for this assignment. Remember, I showed you a way of um, we could draw a marquee and draw a box around it and go F4, and it shows me just what's inside that, that, that box, which is kind of cool. There's actually another way of doing it as well. So I'm just going to reset my 3D view, so I have nothing selected, hit F4, right? If you go up to view, um, 
elements in 3D view. See it says 3D cutting planes? If you change, the, look at that, look at this. It's, it's actually like um, side elevations in a plan view, and you can actually chop up your terrain. So this is pretty cool. So I can just say, right, I want to cut my site straight through here, and I want to hide this area. Go, OK. Now, nothing happens because... You also have to turn on, oh sorry, where is it? Elements to view in 3D. See it's 3D cutaway? As soon as you switch that on, it does a really cool little 3D cutaway. And of course, you can save that as a view. And you, I'm going to call it cutaway. So, okay, this is not required for, the, for this um, assignment. But you can see it's quite a nice way. And it also means if I want to go, so I can go, there's section A5. Okay, here's my view of the car park. And here's my 3D cutaway. Pretty cool, eh? So you can see that. See this one here? I can see the other side. It's actually switched off the 3D cutaway. So saving the view saved the 3D cutaway as well. And the other cool thing is, um, if we just go into here, um, what I usually do is change the 3D cutting plane. See, it says here it says it's going to be paint 04. You can change that to red, which is a classic colour for using when you cut through something. You know, they usually paint the surface that you've cut um, red. So you can actually do 3D cutaways. You can even, um, it's not, it doesn't make a lot of sense for this at the moment, but you can also cut your, your scene. Um, horizontally as well. So if I wanted to go in here and cut, now you can actually, see this is a little bit confusing, I can't, for some reason you can't zoom into this, but let's say I wanted to cut through, let's say the 20 metre contour. I can actually come down here to Z and change that to 20, Oops. and then go, oh, sorry, <coughs> don't hit escape, that makes it everything go away. Sorry, 3D cutting planes. Sorry. 20, you've got to hit that. It locks it in. Cool. Cut the top off. And I know that that's at 20 metres now. So that's actually where the 20 metre contour is. So you can do cutaways. Again, it doesn't really make a lot of sense in this case, cutting my terrain like this. But um, what I might do is, I, I, actually I'll make a little YouTube video because, again, it's not related to this. Um, but, yeah, I'll make a little YouTube because there's a really cool technique although it's kind of obscure to create new contours. Yeah? Oh, for some reason in the email you can't see it, but if you follow, if you go to the, um, the Moodle thing, it's got the, the videos embedded, but for some reason it doesn't embed it in the email. But yeah, if you follow that link. It's actually been ridiculously popular. This morning there'd been 700 views of that, which I'm assuming isn't you guys watching it over and over and over. So yeah, in sort of two or three days I've had 700, 700 views. It's probably even more than that. It's just going through the roof. <laughs> yeah, and I've got lots and lots and lots of people now subscribing to, to my YouTube videos. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot to ask Trina for some paper, didn't I? Um, but yeah, it's been ridiculously popular. What are we up to at the moment? Oh uh, yeah, so if you go to that, if you go to that Moodle, uh, yeah, you'll get the uh, the YouTube search thing will probably just take a few days before it starts to go up the rankings. Yeah, 727 views so far. Crikey. <laughs> yeah, so obviously you guys aren't the only ones that want to know how to create terrains from aerial photos. Well, you don't know how valuable they are because yeah, the second part of it's only had a hundred and something views. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, that 3D cutaway as well. You can just flick it on and off by going Command Y or Edit 3D. So you can actually switch it on and off. 
But yeah, it's quite, it's quite handy that, just to be able to chop up your scene. But yeah, I might do a little video because you can actually create um, contours from that view. It's a very, very cunning trick. But um, I'll do that as a separate video because it's not related to this and it is kind of complicated. I don't want to melt your brains too much today. Too much. All right. So um, I'm just going to change this back to being all ridges sharp again. Nice. Okay. So does everybody get the whole idea of saving views? It's very, very powerful. It's really, uh, yeah. It's a, um, and you'll see more with the next assignment how we use that to our advantage because we go and start putting all these saved views onto our drawings. It means that we can just update things and go print and everything will get updated, our sections, elevations, and all that sort of carry on. All right. Um, where am I? Class five, printing the wrong way. Um, sorry? Oh, uh, no, sorry, the, the printer's out of um, paper, but I've just gone and ordered some. I think there's probably still A3 paper in it, though. All right, printing the wrong way. So for you guys, right, you're going to go, now, be smart about this, okay, especially if you've manipulated contours. I don't want to see the aerial photo underneath this, so you're going to switch layers on and off. And you probably want to save a view so you can bring it up nice and quick. So in this case, I would want to turn off import site aerial. Okay, so I'm going to go import site aerial. There it is. Turn that off. Um, I also want to turn off my meshes. I want to see my nice, beautiful, curvy splines and use those for contours because they look a hell of a lot nicer um, than the mesh that I've got. So I'm going to go through and turn off both the road mesh and terrain original. Cool. That's looking pretty nice. So again, I can see where my roads are. I can see where my building footprints are. Well, or one of them. In my case, see where everything is. So it looks nice. I like it. Brilliant. Um, by all means, use text. Text is brilliant. Okay. Sometimes, especially if you get lots of things on the page, it gets really confusing. And yes, you could put a key in there saying red blocks of buildings and all that sort of carry on. Or you can just jump in there with the text tool okay, and go put in... Okay, I want to do text on an angle, actually. Can I do that? No, I can't. Okay, I can rotate it later, though. So... Car park. You know, all of a sudden my mysterious looking shape on the ground has become a car park. Um, you just click away from that. If I wanted to rotate that, go Command D, go or Edit, sorry, Command D, rotate around that axis like that. Cool, drag it down here. Okay, now remember this text here is two and a half millimeters high. And that's at one, at two, one, at one to two and a half thousand. If you're not sure what scale you should be working at, cunning trick. What we're going to do, oh, what the hell is that doing out there? Just make sure you've got nothing floating off outside because it will try and fit everything in your drawing onto this sheet of paper. Again, later on we'll, we, we won't have that problem, but today we do. Um, you could put your title bar on here as well. But again, in the future we won't be doing that. We'll be doing that on the, on the layouts. Anything that is specific, like the car park, by all means, stick that on here. But um, things like title blocks and that in the future we'll be putting on our layouts. Okay. So, file. First thing is page setup. So I want a piece of A3. Cool, A3. And I want it in, um, in landscape. File, print. Now, we want to hit this show details, right? So this should be the printer that we're going to. Now, Archicad's actually got a whole bunch of settings in here. So if you're not seeing it, make sure that's set to Archicad. You can see here it's got original, one to two and a half thousand, and it fits nicely on our page. However, if you don't know what the scale should be, see here it says fit to page is one to 17,000 and, uh, sorry, 1,797, which isn't on any scale ruler I've seen. So I could go, that's pretty cool. 
How about we go 1 to 2,000? Okay. And you can see that actually fits on my page a lot better. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind, it's going to fit everything. So if I had that little circle out here, this, you know, it's going to not fit on my page properly. So you want to get, make sure you've got nothing sitting out, out here somewhere. Now, I could do this. However, it's a little, I, I find it a little bit risky because sometimes you go to print and because it's scaling at the, when it gets to print, sometimes it shrinks things. So like sometimes it'll shrink your text down, which isn't very cool. So what I do is I go, okay, 1 to 2,000 is cool, but I'm going to cancel this and go down here and change it 1 to 2,000 and go, okay. In this case, it wasn't a huge, huge difference. But then I know exactly what it's going to look like. You know, I can see the text and everything, and if something doesn't line up or looks ugly, I can change it. And then go file print again. Cool, and it, it's at 1 to 2,000. Brilliant. Now, there's also, um, you could put your title block on there, or you can kind of cheat a little bit. And it has actually got um, header and footer in here as well. And you can actually go through and just fill in the blocks and it will create a title block for you. So I can say project name, et cetera, et cetera. Or I can just go custom text, um, assignment one. And my name. Oops. Um, I don't want that. I don't want that in this case. That could be quite handy. It will actually put the name of the saved view. So if it was my cutaway, it would actually say cutaway on there. Um, date and time, that would be cool. Printing scale, that would be cool as well. Anything else? What font? Yeah, you can choose a font. Um, the size of the text. So I might, actually I might make that three millimeters. That's a little bit bigger. Location, it's going at the footer on the right hand side. That's cool. Maybe I want it somewhere else, but. And this is what it's going to put. So it's going to say 1 to 2,000, the date and time. Oh, that looks ugly, actually. I don't like it. 1 to 2,000, assignment 1. Oh, actually, let's go assignment 1, um, plan. Oh. Yeah. Oh, OK. Now, I could go print. Um, I, I should really pause the video for this, because it's kind of a breach of copyright. Um, or I can go save as PDF. Very nice. Um, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. But you want to save it to some smart place like assignment one slash for print. Um, I'll just save it there though. Give it a name that makes sense because it's just going to give it the name of the thing. So I'm going to call that you know, assignment one plan. And Um, just with naming things, just um, for, any, for any, naming anything, avoid using um, funny characters like question marks and at symbols and things like that, um, and even full stops, because you've got to remember that if you send these files to like a PC, it's going to see the full stop and think it's a file extension. Um, if it goes onto the internet, even a space is going to get replaced with percent %20, and that can break links and things like that, because you can't have spaces in, a, in an internet address. So that's why you'll see people using like underscores instead. So you, what you want to do is keep it just to alphanumeric, you know, letters and numbers and underscores is cool. As soon as you start putting things like question marks in there, that can mean something to different systems. Like on the internet, a question mark means that there's some variable being passed to the web page. And so it could break a link if you tried to email it. I don't know what will happen. It might work, it might not work. So it's a good idea to not use... Um, Spaces and things. Spaces aren't too bad. The PC will interpret it. Uh, yeah, most computers will interpret it just fine. But at symbols and hashes and slashes and things like that, especially slashes, because on the PC a slash indicates a new folder. So it's going to be looking for a folder with a file in it instead of that file name. So you've got to be really careful. And it should always have .pdf on the end. I'd usually turn that hide extension off. It usually puts it in there anyway, but again, you want to make sure that the file extension is there. If you go and email it to somebody, they, their system needs to know it's a PDF. Save. So, now, here's the slightly illegal bit. Um, 
So here's my, where is it, desktop. Here's my file, right? If I open this, you'll see it sticks Archicad education version Graphisoft in the corner. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Okay, it's got my little, my little name and everything in the corner. I'm not too worried about that, the title block at this stage. Next assignment, yes, definitely, we're going to be doing flashy title blocks. But at this stage, I'm not worried. If you want to get rid of this, I'll show you a cunning trick. I'm going to go and right-click on this and go open with Illustrator. Now, I know most of you probably don't know Illustrator intimately, but we're only going to be using one little thing. We're going to select that, um, that watermark, delete it, and save it. Illustrator... Or oh, PDF is an Adobe product, an Adobe format. Illustrator can open and edit PDFs natively. Okay, so you can go in there and create a PDF doc, uh, a Illustrator file and save it as a PDF and open it and edit it further. And you'll actually find, so you can actually change all the line weights and stuff in here as well, which is pretty cool. Because Illustrator does some funky stuff with like fills and things like that. Um, so if I wanted to put drop shadows on things, I could actually just open it into Illustrator. We'll do that later in the year, but um, at this stage, so you can select, oh, so you might have to use a little, a little arrow, select that and go delete, and then just go save and close. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, I think they put that on there because it's the education version, they don't want you um, doing drawings for people. But now I can go into here and you'll see that if I open it, the watermark's gone. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't do the same thing with your photos. It will get embedded because it's a raster document, so it burns pixels into it. But again, I can, when we get to that, we can um, either drop it onto a bit of paper and you can delete it, which you'd normally do anyway. You'd have a little layout with all your images in it and then your, um, the watermark, again, you just open it and delete it. Cool. See how nice and curvy these splines are? much, much nicer than the ones that appear on the, on the mesh. So that's why I was saying you want to kind of keep these contours because they look fantastic for these drawings. And when you go to print, they'll, they're ridiculously high resolution. It's vector information. So they look beautiful. If you open this PDF into Photoshop, though, it will rasterize it and turn them into pixels again. So you won't be able to select a line. It's not a line, it's just a bunch of pixels. Okay, but you could open this into Illustrator and as I said before, we'll do that. Um, we'll do that later in the year. Yeah, I can grab all these these lines and stuff, and then change their weights and stuff like that. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Oops, it's obviously a fill. No, it's being a little bit, a little bit awkward, isn't it? Uh, actually, it says it's a spline, and it's actually it's kind of vectorized it in a way. But um, I find it's brilliant for changing fills. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'll show you why, it, why it's so cool. I'll just close this one, and I'll go through the whole printing process again. So let's do it for um, one of my sections here. Okay. First trick is. What we need to do is change our fills to solid fills. So I'm going to just change this one down. Oh no, I've changed this one here, right? So what you do is you go into here, and I'm going to choose a solid fill. It has to be a solid fill, because otherwise it will go into Illustrator as lines. And I don't want lines, so I just want a nice big solid fill. Hit OK. Cool. File, um, print. So this is at 1 to 100, it's going to be that big. OK, that's cool. If I did 1 to 50, it would look better. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this the wrong the wrong way. So I'm going to do it in here, and you we should see that our text gets bigger, which isn't cool. Save as PDF. Cool. Yep. Save. Cool. And I'm going to Illustrate and go File Open. Desktop. No, not that one, this one. And here it all is. See, the line weights have stretched, and the size of the text has stretched as well. Remember, this was three millimeters high? 
This is obviously bigger. So when I went to do that rescaling at print, all it's done is blown the image up, everything. So, which kind of sucks because you can see my line weights have also got like really thick. All the sides of my text wouldn't line up with the size of the text throughout my document. And I've got no control over it. But I can go over to here and change things like um, the fill color and do like pattern fills and all that sort of carry on. Yeah. If it was like a building, you could actually go and like add a drop shadow and things like that. Somewhere. I can't remember where now. Blah, 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 blah. Artistic burn, uh, I can't remember where it is. Anyway, this is an illustrator lesson. So you'll find in here somewhere as well. They're not a brush library. We want to fill our gradient fill, stroke, transparency. No. Oops, sorry. Open up. I can't remember if this is. Uh, anyway, I can't remember where the fills are. Where is it? Yeah. That's just colours. But yeah. Embarrassing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Maps. Here we go. There's the symbols. I can't remember which one it is for doing different coloured fills. Oh, here we go. Nature. Flowers. No, those are just colours. But yeah, somewhere in there we can create our own fills. I'll do a I'll do an illustrator session later on. All right. So we can um, do our sections and elevations. We can print. So again, I'll do the printing the correct way is that I change that to 1 to 50 at this stage. Cool. See how text is smaller? File, print. And I'll go original, yeah, print. Oops, I didn't mean to do print. I meant to save it as a PDF, sorry. <laughs> save as PDF. So this time, our fill and our line weights are correct, and our text sizes are correct. See the difference? Both 1 to 50, but one's gone and stretched the text and everything. The only time that that would actually be quite handy is if you're doing, maybe you had to export, like you're doing like a contents page, and you want to show like little thumbnails of your drawings. Then it's really cool, because then you can go and shrink down the size of them, and you don't want the text and everything to be really big because if you go and shrink it down so it's like a little icon size and the text is like as big as your entire drawing it would be a complete mess but in that instance you don't need to read the text you're just showing a little picture of you know page one plan it's got like a little thumbnail of the plan so in that case it would be fantastic shrinking it right down but um, and we'll see how we can do that in layouts as well but in most cases you want to do it at the drawing level all right, um, is there anything else? Have I forgotten? Oh yes, there is one thing actually. Remember I saved this view? And I saved it at 1 to 100. But now I've changed it to 1 to 50. If I double clicked on this, it goes back to 1 to 100. It's kind of inconvenient. But not to worry, a couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to change this back to 1 to 50. Um, what else is there? Actually, I'll, let's say we've got, I need another layer switched on as well. So for some reason, I needed the road mesh on. Okay. All right. So that's all good. Actually, I'll show you. See, at the moment, see how it doesn't really make much sense. I would normally have this hidden beneath my concrete because I want the concrete to be in front. So what I can do, if I go and grab all these, 
Just holding down the shift key. Oops, not that one. Right click, display order, bring to front. So now it goes over the top. Oh, maybe that one as well, bring to front. Cool. So I've made a whole bunch of changes. If I go to the section settings, so save views, here's that section that I saved. And down here it says settings. Cool. So it says here get current window settings. Just click that. See that changed to 1 to 50. I hit OK. And so now I've updated that view. You'll also notice actually See, layer combination. Remember I'd made a layer combination for it? Now it says custom. Because I made some custom changes, it's actually different. Technically what I should have really done is changed my layer combination to include that road mesh. And the advantage of that is that all of my sections would all get updated in one fell swoop. I wouldn't have to go through every single one updating them manually. And that's kind of a little bit... Um, overwhelming at the moment, but you start to once you start to understand how this 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 workflow operates, you realise how powerful it is as well. So you start off putting things on layers, creating layer combinations, saving views. Later on, we'll drop those onto pieces of paper, and then we'll automate the whole creating of PDFs or printing or whatever you have to do. All right. Um, Anything else? Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Let's just go down. Remember we've got our walls down here, right? Somewhere. Is this, was this made with walls or is it just a big slab? Yeah. Let's go down. Oops. Notice I've got layers switched on and off now, which is very inconvenient. It's all right. We're going to pop down here. Okay. Matthew created this one. He's just made a big slab, which is kind of inconvenient because I can't put windows into it. I've also got layers switched off that I don't like, so I'm going to go select all show. Okay. That's nice. I'm going to save this view as sports building. Oops. Build you all. Oh, caps lock still on. Cool. Create. Okay, that means I've got, you know, here's the car park, that's lake view, here's my sports building. Awesome. So this slab, so the, the bottom of this should really be down here somewhere, shouldn't it? And I should know because that there I think is a 14 metre contour. So I'm just going to replace a few things in here. I'm going to replace this with the wall, right? And I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, where is it? I right, so that's a slab. So if I get a wall, I'm going to do two walls for this building. I'm going to do one for the downstairs bit and then one for the upstairs bit. Uh, right, so I'm going to set the top of my wall. Actually, I'm going to do it in here because it's a little bit more logical for me. The base of my wall is going to be at 14 metres and the wall's going to be 3 metres high. Cool. Hit OK. And I'm just going to magic wand this wall, or uh, this slab I mean, and I've got my walls. I don't know. So what's the height of this one then? Oh, OK, 13 metres. Not a big problem, I've just got to drop it down a metre. So I go Command 9, minus 1 metre. Oopsies. Why did I, why did that happen? It's because my groups are suspended. OK, so I've ended up Moving just part of it, so turn my groups back on. That's better. Command 9, minus 1 metre. There we go. Okay, so there's my terrain. And I'm sitting right on it. In fact, what I, what I suppose I technically... I should really have a slab under there, but it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, I'm going to use this one here. So the top of this wall is at 16, so I'm going to make... Hmm, actually, that doesn't really work, does it? Let's make the top of this wall at 15 metres. Obviously it's... So that makes it uh, 2 metres high, isn't it? 
Well, that's probably about right. Let's get this big slab then, and we'll make that go from, we'll make that 15.2, and the base at 15. All right. Oh, sorry, 16. So that needs to be 15 as well. Again, if I go into here, oh, actually, it doesn't matter. I just want the top of that to be at 15. There we go. So there's my downstairs bit. There's my floor. Need another copy of this. Easy way of doing it. I'm going to change its elevation, right? And if I touch the option key, I get a copy of it. Excellent. So there's that one, there's that one. This upstairs bit, I want it to be a little bit higher. What have I got at the moment? 1.8 metres. No, I need it to be 2.4. Cool. Oh, that's a slab. How did I end up with a slab there? Oh, shit, is that what I've done? <laughs> ah, bugger. <laughs> okay, <laughs> delete that one. You are meant to be 13 to 15. And that slab, which is the grey one. Come on. Yeah, that's a good one. There we go. You are going to be from 15.2. 15. Remember, you always got to move the top up before you move the base up. It's a pain in the bum. All right, that's better. Grab my walls, change the elevation. So see, I'm snapping to this corner here, but then I touch the option key so I get a copy of it. Boom, that's better. Cool. Height of that is 2 metres. I'm going to make that 2.4 metres for this one. Actually, I'm gonna make it, I'll, I'll end up making it a bit higher because um, I want to do that trim to this. So I'm going to grab him, just drag him up, so snap to the corner. Awesome. Actually, this wall here should actually be inserted as well. Because I believe oh, it should come out. So that actually, this slab here, I'll grab this edge and pull him out to line up with the roof. Cool. That means I've got to grab this wall here. Now, if I try and grab this wall, it's going to complain because I need to suspend my groups. Yeah, but the, um, upstairs is the little balcony that comes out. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. No, because, yeah, the balcony comes out, uh, but the building still goes straight up, yeah. If I did want to edit that, I have to suspend my groups if I wanted to move that out. Okay, and then I'd have to get those two to intersect again. I'll do it anyway, just so you can see. So if that was the case, and I moved it out here, see, I want that perpendicular, because that means it's going to go straight out. Whoopsies. I want to make sure I'm moving the wall. Cool, and then I would select... This is where it gets a little bit tricky, because I don't know which is the top wall and the bottom wall. That one goes... The base elevation's 13, that one's 15. In fact, did I grab the wrong one before? Yes, I did. Undo. Yeah. So, yeah, you see the base elevation, 15.2. That's the one I want. Move him out. Should really zoom in so I can actually see what I'm doing. There's my little. It actually doesn't matter if I've moved it at a bit of a funny angle. That's cool. Because I'm just going to select these guys and go intersect. Cool. But I don't want that anyway. Now, that's what I was talking about. So um, I actually want to do an overhang. So I need all of these walls. So I'll just turn that grouping back on. I'm just going to bam that up to, uh, let's say, 19 metres should be fine. There we go. Do my trim. So I'm going to select that. Now, it might complain again because it's um, grouped. Let's see what happens. Trim elements. So it wants to know, well... What do you want to trim it to? I want to trim it to this here, and I want to keep the bottom half. No, nope, I didn't mind. So sometimes you might get, when you're editing group things, it might complain. The thing that's keeping out is a deep, thinner slab that you've got in the middle. Yeah, so I I've got, got a wall, a slab, and a wall. Do you not necessarily need that? No, but really I should. Okay. Yeah, and I could. 
easy way of doing that, if I go and grab that and go um, click on there, see that's moving it around? I want to move it vertically. So if you get it going vertically, you hold the shift key, it's going to lock. And I want it to go down as far as this. See, it snaps to that. Cool. Again, though, the problem is, is that this should be slightly higher. So then I should really put this at maybe 13 point, let's say, 0.05. Oops. Ugh, stupid archi here. There we go. Ugh. You can't think in this program. There we go, 13.05. Yeah, and then the top of that at 13.05. Because the ground is at 13. Otherwise, I get, see it's kind of forming those strange lines. Now it's not. Oh, I forgot to hit option when I did that copy. Undo, 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 undo. Grab them. Touch the option key, see the little plus. Get out of the way. Blocking it. Yeah, there we go. Get out of the way. There we go. Yeah. Oh, actually, I got that wrong. Um, but if I go command 9 minus 0.2, it'll drop me down the right thing. See, even sometimes when they're exactly the same height, you can kind of fudge it a little bit by just going, well, let's make that 13.01, and it's enough just to pull it up. Okay, because it's 13 metres, so it's had two objects exactly in each other. I could have done a solid element operation as well and done a subtraction with upwards extrusion, and it would have minused out this tiny little bit of earth. Mind you, in this case, it would have made me a big hole under here as well, which would have sucked. But that's cool. I'm liking that. Um, oh, maybe this is actually meant to be under the building, so then I could just move that. See, so always using the snaps. Okay, a little bit overkill in this case, but if I did a section through it, it'd look quite nice. I'd have a, I'd have a slab underneath my building. Yeah. In actual fact, that one there would only come back to about here somewhere. All right, so I'm ready to put doors and windows in. Now this can be a little bit tricky in here as well because I don't know where I'm putting them. So this is where technically you should have stories, but yeah, or you have lower sports, lower um, uh, two layers, you know, lower floor sports building and upper floor sports building. You can switch one layer off and one layer on. As soon as I go and drop a door in here, I don't really know if I'm upstairs or downstairs. Yeah, it turns out I was downstairs, which is kind of annoying. So, a couple of options. I could just drop them in here. So, for example, there's a window over here. Okay. That's one upstairs and that's one downstairs. And you'll see in here, there's an upstairs and downstairs. I would probably recommend that you create two layers. It's a whole lot easier because... If, I, if that lower floor isn't switched on, I can't put windows into it by accident. So it's easy enough. You know, sports, walls, um, I'm going to put ground and one or something like that. Oh, it's one and two, how's that? Oops, sports. And another one called Sports Wall 2. Okay, if there was, again, if I, I suppose I want to be pedantic, select all show, update all layer. Oops. Show, update. Cool. Then I know my all. In this case, it's going to be easier for me to go in here and go, you are. Uh, it helps if I. Oh, I didn't have a. Where is it? Oh, did I hit escape again? I do that all the time. I did two. Don't hit cancel. <laughs> yeah. You'll find you do it all the time. Cool. I'm going to update that one as well just to. So 
the summer had okay. Uh, that's going to be Sports War 1. Actually, I'm just going to undo that for a second. A handy trick, if you've got a whole bunch of stuff to move to different layers, okay, so in this case I want to move all of these walls down here onto a layer. A handy way of doing it, if you hide um, sports walls one right, then once you've got everything on there, they should disappear. So in this case it's a bit meaningless because they should disappear. So if you had like lots and lots of trees, it's like it was all pine trees, but they're all on the same layer. So you create pine trees layer, and then you start changing all your pine trees to the pine tree layer. They should all disappear. If you've got, if you can see any, you haven't changed it yet. That's a hell of a lot quicker than going through. Have I changed that one? No. Have I changed that one? Yes. Have I changed that one? No. Yeah. You just hide the layer, and then as soon as you change the layer, they disappear. All right. So now I can go through. I'm going to shop for a nice ranch light. I know when I drop these windows in, they're going to be dropping into the right place. No doors, no, not layers. Command T for tittings, or double click the door. Is there any sliding doors in here? Hinge doors, sliding doors, here we go. Flat top sliding doors, that's what I want. And remember, if you're making aluminium, um, aluminium doors, there, I don't think there is aluminium doors in here. However, not a big deal because if we go through these settings, you'll find somewhere. Blah 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 blah. Here's a, the frame. See, it's even got like little. All right, cool. Maybe I want those. Frame width is 0.2. So if I go 0.05. Oops. Something like that. Upper. Just, uh, 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0.05. Cool, that's looking pretty funky. Um, I don't want. Let's say um, I'm going to split this maybe in centre, so vertically I want two, and horizontally I want one. Two and one. Cool, I've made aluminium doors. Only thing I need to change now, see this little guy here, it's got the materials. So, leaf materials, I want that all to be aluminium. I'm just going to make it grey because I'm lazy. Oh, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah, grey. Grey. Um, this outside, oh, it hasn't got the option for it anyway. What the glass looks like, I want um, glass dark. Cool. That OK. Which way do they open? They open it this way. Awesome. Okay, my dimensions are a bit wrong still because I didn't really set that. But they look like aluminium. Might make them a bit wider here. So let's make that uh, three meters wide. Cool, looking cool. And you can even open up the door if you grab the little pink dot. Ta da! Okay, so even if there isn't a door, like there wasn't aluminium doors, not a big deal. I just took that one, made the frame a bit thinner, changed it to be grey, and away you go. All right. Okay, my battery's about to go flat. And I think I'll leave it there, and um, we'll just spend the next 20 minutes just playing around with that. Um, is there any other questions? Is there anything you want me to cover? You've got all the skills now to do the assignment. <laughs>